Hey everyone, I want to thank you for watching. Today we are going to take a look at SIP normalization scripting and transparency scripting in Unify Communications Manager. Uh, one of the reasons you might want to look at this type of scripting and the manipulation of SIP headers is for the cleanup of maybe non-standard messaging or just different messaging. SIP is a pretty well-defined standard but sometimes the implementations vary. So when connecting Unified Communications Manager to third-party systems, you may need this to kind of clean up the, the messaging. Uh, another reason you would use this is for transparency. So Unified Communications Manager is essentially a back-to-back -back user agent, right? A call comes in, that, uh, that messaging is sort of torn apart, the Unified Communications Manager processes route the call, manipulate the call to, uh, to some extent, and then the, another packet is generated to go out the other side of Unified Communications Manager with the Unified Communications Manager supported headers. Now, transparency allows you to take headers that are unsupported from one side to the other and kind of bridge that gap. So if there's some type of information that you need to pass through for some reason, you can do it, um, but you have to use transparency scripting and the SIP normalization scripts inside of Unication Communications Manager to do it. Um, most use cases, 99% of use cases, or high 90s at least, don't need this, right? So you've probably very seldomly ran into this. Um, the other thing is, is a lot of times, uh, more commonly, is this type of thing is needed when working with uh, service providers. So the unified border element actually offloads this uh, even to a greater extent as that interface and that DMARC point between an ITSP, right, your internet telephony provider, and your unified communications manager uh, system. So anyway, this is something that's not super common, but when you do get into it, it's very important to know how to, you know, diagnose and troubleshoot and build these scripts in a way that they're, they're kind of fail safe so that it doesn't impact your environment. So anyway, with that being said, I have an example. I'm going to pass through an alert info header and we're going to talk about what that does. Um, it's essentially I'm, I'm wanting to pass a differentiated ringtone through Unified Communications Manager to the end station um, for some differentiated uh, alerts. In a healthcare environment, you might want one ringtone for very critical calls and you might want uh, a different ringtone for you know, just day-to-day -day, um, basic calling. So anyway, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And uh, if you have a Unified Communications Manager in your lab, might be a good idea to fire it up and follow along. Uh, with that being said though, let's dive into it. All right, so to get started, we are going to jump into Unified Communications Manager. Uh, but first I wanna talk about the topology at play here. Uh, I have a, I actually have a cube gateway that is my fictitious uh, nurse call system, right? Just because I don't have a nurse call system in my, my home lab here, of course. Uh, the call is coming from extension 5555 over a SIP trunk. It comes into Unified Communications Manager uh, and it's processed through a normalization script or transparency script. Uh, these transparency scripts are in the Lua scripting language. Um, so that's the, the Lua indicator there. Um, it goes through the Unified Communications Manager call process. The messaging is reassembled coming out the other side. That Lua script is attached to a SIP profile, which is then attached to a device, which is extension 1002. So that's the topology. Uh, let's take a look at the configuration specifically. If we come in to devices, device settings, and SIP normalization script is the option we want to select. You'll see that I have a, a handful here that I've been, been working with. Uh, because I have a script on both sides of the equation, I want to show you each side and kind of give you an idea of what it's doing. So pass through inbound. This script uh, is, this one's relatively straightforward. I have a comment here that explains what it does. Always a good idea to comment your code so that if someone else inherits it, they know what they're looking at. The Lua language has a number of standard functions that are built in, 
Uh, in Cisco's implementation, there's kind of an extension to that, and it is this uh, M here, which is which is initialized with the curly brackets. This is essentially the SIP messages as a table of, of headers, essentially. So that's essentially what that is. It's, it's spelled out in the documentation from Cisco in more depth than what I'm going to go into here. But check that out in the video description. Also, I have some uh, information about Lua in the video description as well. So you, you want to be familiar with both because it's Lua syntax with Cisco, you know, swizzle to it. Uh, the next item here is M allow headers. We want to consume the alert info header in this inbound message and then pass it through the other side. So that's the one we care about. I have tracing enabled. There is this function, the function uh, M dot inbound underscore invite. So there's also a Cisco live deck I'm going to include that, that has some good stuff in about how to, to differentiate this. It is exactly what you think if you give it some thought though. It's uh, the inbound message coming into Unified Communications Manager and we're looking at the invite message specifically, right? So if we get some other call signaling, that will be ignored. We're just looking at invites because that's where the alert info header is typically deployed in an invite uh, message. Uh, tracing marked enabled there as well, probably a little redundant. We're picking up and we're making a original alert variable. So we're grabbing the value of alert info uh, with this option here, setting the value of this variable to be the value of alert info. Uh, we check to ensure that a value was set. So if a message comes in that doesn't have that value, it's ignored, right? And when this if statement is hit, it's skipped over and um, it just simply returns the same message headers that came in, no harm, no foul. But if in fact there is a value here, we then add it to the pass through object. We get that pass through object. We add a header to it. We take the value that was gathered above and we actually stuff it into a fictitious header called X alert info. The reason we do this is because Unified Communicant Unified Communications Manager actually recognizes and uses alert info um, natively. Now, the problem is, in this example, we're, we're using a, a different header format and, and so forth. I won't get into a ton of depth there. We're passing through a header that's technically supported, but, but Communications Manager does not pass it through natively on its own. So we still have to, to get it from one call leg to the other. Uh, I have a trace format statement here that says uh, added, right, and then this is a notation for a string. The string is that original alert value that we gathered the whole way up here, and uh, we just want to pass that out. So if um, that original value was, you know, value, right, it will say added value as the alert info header essentially saying uh, or indicating to us in the log file that hey all of this section of the script has been processed the nice thing about that is because it's in an if statement uh, if we see it we know that this you know something was captured and passed through here is where we get to see what it actually was uh, if we don't see it we know that that portion of the script never fired so there is a similar script on the outbound side of Unified Communications Manager. If you remember from our topology diagram, this script is actually applied to that SIP profile on the end device itself. So here we're looking for two headers, alert info. Uh, Unified Communications Manager actually generates an alert info header of its own. And we also want to pick up that alert uh, or X alert info header that we built in the prior script on the inbound side uh, or on that inbound call leg. You'll notice the function outbound invite. So when we're sending an outbound in uh, an invite outbound from Unified Communications Manager, we want to essentially do the stuff in this function. Uh, similar similar workflow. We're we're doing a little bit differently here. We're getting the alert the X alert info header from the pass-through object, from the 
uh, you know, pass through or we essentially have these headers. They're just about to be put into a packet, to a SIP packet to go to the phone, uh, but we're grabbing them from this table. We're actually pulling out the Alexa, in, the X in alert info information. We're then uh, verifying that, hey, it actually did come through. Then we modify the alert info header to have that value. Last but not least, we return that object and it uh, finishes its uh, processing in Unified Communications Manager. It hits the wire and it goes to the end device. I want to show you the SIP trunk. Uh, this trunk is called Cube 4331. This is actually, I'm using that to emulate the, the end system, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, down at the bottom here, I am the whole way at the bottom, you want to look for normalization script. You actually select this from a drop down. Uh, and if you're debugging or working on this in the lab, definitely turn on tracing uh, for troubleshooting purposes. Otherwise, if your script is failing, you're not going to have any details to, to look at and understand exactly what's going on. Uh, parameter values, these are actually kind of nice. I'm going to talk about these in a different video, uh, so stay tuned for that. So I am in a SIP profile now, and as you scroll down through here, you will come to a normalization script section. Uh, you simply drop down that outbound uh, or drop down that script list, select outbound, and again, tracing on or off accordingly. And you want to save and reset. You always need to save and reset when you manipulate this either on a SIP profile to go and impact the end devices, or if you're using a trunk, you need to reset the trunk as well. Uh, so save, reset, and we're good to go. All right, so to validate that this configuration is working, what you're gonna to wanna to do is come into a real-time monitoring tool, uh, and you can, uh, I, I like to go to voice and video tab here, and I click on the real-time data. You'll see the list of calls. Uh, so what happens if I open this up, you see the call diagram, and we wanna look at the invites. So invite, this is coming in inbound to Unified Communications Manager. And you see, hey, the alert info is set. Uh, this is in SpectraLink format. And backroad.wave is kind of a groovy rock uh, ringtone that we're going to have play on the phone. Close that one. Open up the, uh, the diagram again. So the next piece is to look at the invite going outbound from Unified Communications Manager. So the cube that's acting as our alerting system. The 112.11, this is Unified Communications Manager, uh, the SpectraLink phone that we're sending this to, and here is the invite. Let's open it up. You'll notice uh, two things, and this is, I find this extremely helpful, particularly in these cases. There is a pre-normalization message, and there is a post-normalization message. So, the pre-normalization message, let's take a look at it. There is, in fact, alert info. This is in the Cisco format, uh, Belcore DR1 and DR2, and I believe there's a precedence ring or something to that effect as well. It's been a while since I've seen that, uh, the documentation on that. Either way, this is not the format that our end device wants. Uh, if you come down a little bit further, you do see that this X alert info made it through. This is the pass-through object, in other words. Uh, it is then uh, has a value assigned, and this is the SpectraLink format. You can see that the, the formats are a little bit different. So the backroad.wave file is kind of like a, a groovy rock ringtone on the actual SpectraLink phone that uh, when we call it out with alert info, it will play and um, yeah, has kind of a distinctive sound to it. Now, X alert info is not gonna get the job done. We need to be in this field here. So, let's look at our post normalization message. If I can get it lined up correctly, you'll scroll down through here and you'll notice all the standard stuff. And here it is, alert info, the backroad.wave file is called out. This is the message that then goes on the wire to the phone uh, or over the air to the phone in this case because it's a wireless phone. But, uh, but yeah, that is it. The next thing I want to take a look at is how do we debug 
these scripts in real time. We want to see the values that are being passed. We want to know if an error has occurred. Uh, well, let's dive in to really my favorite way to debug these, and that is a special command that I've put together for uh, the CLI, and it actually will scroll the messages in real time. Here we go. All right, so what you want to do is log in with SSH to the system, the Unified Communications Manager, that you are running your Lua script, your transparency scripts on, and uh, get those CLI, Essentially, what we can do is tail the active log, the, CU, uh, the CUCM trace file. That's essentially what we're doing here. We're looking for the most recent, and then we're actually applying a regular expression to look for SIP Lua messages specifically, right? Because it's a very noisy log file. We want just these messages while we're debugging this. I have a single node cluster, and this I mean, this file you have to actually collect with RTMT from every node in the cluster uh, under normal circumstances if you have your, your load spread out. In this case, I have a single node. I know that all call processing is going through this node, so it makes it you know a little bit more concise to troubleshoot as well. So uh, anyhow, I'm going I'm to bang the enter key on this. And uh, as we send a call through, you're going to see some messaging come through about the script and then we'll talk about what those messages mean. So let me go ahead and generate a call and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, so you see some messaging uh, and this is essentially those call outs that I made where I, uh, if you recall, I said added that value, the value of alert info header. Uh, that was added as the alert info header. Now, technically it's the X alert info header. I guess I should, should fix that. Uh, incoming alert, right, there it is. Um, alert info header set to uh, that value on the output side. This is just base level tracing. So now what I wanna do is go in and show you a, um, I'm gonna go and screw one of the scripts up basically, mess up the syntax, and we'll see the error messages in real time uh, in this log file as well. So we're gonna to go to our normalization script. We're gonna to go to the inbound side. We'll go to the inbound side and we'll make a uh, make kind of a mess of that. And you know, really what I'm gonna do is just go and uh, type some random stuff. We have to save and reset the trunk, don't forget. All right, cool. So you already see some stuff going on here. Uh, you see that the device, cube 4331, that's actually the SIP trunk device that it's assigned to. Uh, is is giving us some indication here. So it closed out. It uh, tore that down as we restarted it. Normalization, uh, storing a new script. Here is a load error. Device uh, error at alert info uh, line 14 equals expected near function. So essentially that syntax error that I created, uh, as you can see right here, cause the problem for the next line. So not a uh, not an uncommon thing to see. Now let's actually try and execute a call and see if it generates a little bit more noise. And you do see some more log messages. Um, this time on the Spectralink side, it expected a value, it didn't get one. So uh, we can go back and clean that up. But, uh, but yeah, calls out line numbers, so on and so forth. Um, Real basic example, but I just wanted to show you this because this is a great way to watch the logs in real time. Typically what I'll do is I'll have the windows open just like this, develop right in the, uh, the, the content section of the normalization script, execute the script, and you can see in real time with this, uh, with this command what's happening. So cut your, your cycles down substantially and if your uh, coding skills are a little on the weak side, like mine are, saves you a lot of time, uh, and you're definitely going to be bouncing back and forth um, as you kind of work some trial and error stuff uh, through the system. So hopefully that has given you an idea of at least where to start when building either transparency or SIP normalization scripts in Unified Communications Manager. Uh, check out some of my resources below in the video uh, description section. Um, let me know with questions, comments, tips, or tricks. Always love to hear from my viewers. Uh, with that being said, I want to thank you for watching. I hope to see you again soon.